Hallelujah. I've been teaching on building strategic relationships. How many of you have been blessed in this series? Now, very important. I use a language on Tuesday. I said, you can use God to build a healthy life. And also use God to go to heaven. You can use what you are doing here to prepare yourself to go to heaven. But ultimately, there are people that will go to heaven through hell. They will have to suffer, go through pain, delve into troubles and challenges until they almost give up on life. And then finally, he that endure to the end shall be saved. And there are other persons that will go to heaven with heavenly experiences. They will look like where they are going to before they get there. I believe in enjoying Christian life. Believe me, my kind of person, if what was painted to me in Christ was poverty, I wouldn't be born again. It's true. I believe that Jesus walks into our life. He said, I and my father, we will come and we will sup with you. We are going to make your life different. So it depends on what you believe. Remember, I told you the other time, there are two brothers in the faith. The older brother and the younger brother. The older brother, you know the Bible said that a man had two sons. The one you called the prodigal son was the one who said, give me what belongs to me. The elder brother stayed at home. You remember? And then when the other guy finished his money, he came back and asked his father, I'm sorry. The father said, please bring more money and lavish on him. And I said to you, the man they are talking about there is God. He was a type of God. Because the Bible called it a parable. The two kinds of sons are the two kinds of church people. There is the legal Christians and there are the sons. There are people who follow God legally. The legalistic people are the traditional and religious bent Christians. They believe that the only way to walk with God is to be very faithful. And you know because of that, faithfulness is what they think is what gives the results. But the younger brother is actually working with God on the basis of faith. If my father has it, that means it's my own. I can demand for it. So if you watch in the church, there are two extreme kind of people. They are the rigorous extreme religion, religion people and they are the grace people. Are you hearing me now? Grace believes that God is extravagant. If you study the parable, the parable is not about the prodigal son. The Bible didn't call that boy prodigal son. It was church people that called him prodigal son. I bet you go back and read that scripture. The prodigal of the parable of, of the prodigal son. The Bible didn't call it prodigal son. It was theologian that carved out the name prodigal son. The word prodigal means extravagant. Are you hearing me now? The person who was, a, was prodigal in that parable was not the son, it was the father. Because how can a man give his son enough wealth and he went and wasted it and came back in repentance? He said, bring another one and waste on him. So that's the extravagancy of God. Come on here. Are we flowing together? So that parable is the parable of the prodigal father. Now look at the problem. When this guy returned back home and the father gave him more wealth, the older brother, which was religion, got angry. I have been around for a while. I've been a Christian for 15 years. And yet you have not given me what belongs to me. God said, it has always been yours, but you don't demand on them. You don't place demands on them. So all the attempts we are trying to do in church is to get you to know what has been given to you by the father freely and for you to place demand on them you can use the word of god and better your life I've, I've done it for 20 years and it has helped me it has worked in my life i didn't come from a rich home i didn't have any inheritance from my father i didn't come from a powerful heritage my brethren are before me and among me so if i'm blabbing you will know but when i heard the gospel i told myself if what when we were born again in the years we were born again the 1990s what we heard first that give your life to jesus everything will be good what you know what you heard if you are poor you are you are broke this one give your life to Jesus. and people gave their life to jesus and their life became worse because they didn't question the gospel was give your life to jesus and your life will be better so why did you get gave, gave your life to christ and your life became bitter than better i began to question that one day i courageously went to my father and asked him, why are you poor why are you poor but the bible said this he couldn't understand it he almost slapped me but it was a curious question because i didn't want to be broke that's why many pastors children don't want to follow the path of their father many christian home have lost their children to yahoo yahoo 
because in their mind God does not pay so we need to revisit the gospel we bring to them Abraham was rich Isaac became richer than him Bible says he went forward until he became very rich his wealth out, outweighed the wealth of Abraham Jacob became mightier that's the part of the just Christianity is painting as if the heritage Jesus gave to us is suffering can I shock you Bible did not say they that believe in Christ must suffer poverty he says it's persecution and persecution is not poverty he didn't say endure hardship he said endure hardness it's different you are not supposed to be in this hardship you can use the word of God and place and reposition your life for instance what I'm doing I'm doing an x-ray listen to me what the Bible means that God has played out your future in a theme so what you do is that you look at the mirror and take what is in the mirror and put it in your life that, what do you do in mirrors I'm asking you when you go to the mirror what do you do you look at your eyes this one is not good you remove it is it not true and then this one is not called you you paint it is it not true so the word of God is the mirror look at the word and take what belongs to the word and put it in your body you can build a powerful relationship and can I shock you relationship is in this book in fact the Bible is the book of relationship basically there is no single topic on earth that is not the word of God nothing down to sex education down to marriage down to children upbringing down to business down to economics and politics everything is in this book but you took it as a religious book that's why you're not seeing the word of God inside it so when we teach God's word what you do is to check yourself where you are and where you're supposed to be and then make movement and correction that's why I said the word of God is profitable for correction instruction rebuke and re re reprove reprove means it's empowering you to make a better move rebuke means you are wrong take a change if you keep changing and keep taking steps on the word of God your life will be brightened it bothers me how we carry Bible for one year lives are not changed because it's a religious book for me it's not a religious book it's a manual okay when you buy a device you don't know how to deal with it the first thing you do is to do what can I shock you? You are God's product. You don't belong to yourself. You belong to God. If you are confused about yourself, go back to his man and you see yourself inside them. You didn't hear what I said. Let me read a scripture for you. Genesis chapter 4. A little long read. And it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended the Lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was wrought against the two of his officers, against the chief of the butler and against the chief of the baker. And he put them in the world, in the house of the captain of the guard, into prison. The place, come on here. Please underline that word. The place where Joseph was bound. Four. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them and he served them. And they continued a season in the world. And they dreamt a dream. And they dreamt a dream, both of them, each man his dream in one night. Each man, according to his interpretation of his dream, the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in prison. Are you following the story? And verse 6, And Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officer that were in his word of his lost house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? And they said unto him, We have dreamt a dream, and there is no interpretation of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretation belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. And the chief butler said to his dream, said his dream to Joseph and said, In my dream, behold, a vine was before me, and in the vine were three branches. And it was not though it budded, and her blossom shot forth, and the cloth that thereof brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in the hand. And I took the grape and pressed out into Pharaoh's cup. And I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation of it. Three branches are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up his head and restore you back to your place. And thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former manner when thou was his butler. Now look at verse 14. Can we read that together? I want to read it go. But think on me when it come, when it shall be well with thee. And shew kindness, I pray thee, unto me. And make mention of me unto Pharaoh. And bring me 
out of this mess for indeed i was stolen away out of the land of the hebrew and here also you see the guy is bringing empathy here also i have done nothing that they should put me into the prison is that your bible is that your bible verse 20 jump and it came to pass on the third day was pharaoh's birthday that he made a feast unto all the servants. he lifted up his head of the head of the chief butler and of the chief beggar among his servants, and he restored the chief butler unto his butlership again and gave the cup into pharaoh's hand but he hanged the baker as joseph had interpreted to them 23 can we read together again one to ready go yet let's 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 wait for them one to ready go yet did not the chief butler remember joseph but forgot him the lord bless the reading of his word i'm going to give you four important facts from this scripture and then if i summarize this teaching without showing you the dead traps of strategic relationship you will make mistake so i'm going to show you when to exit any relationship and i'm going to also help you to see harmful relationship you will never need in your life but the first thing, let me show you four things in the scripture where we read please as i'm preaching position your life from where you are to where you're supposed to be number one important fact god pointed out to me is that when it concerns prophetic relationship god does not make mistakes when it concerns prophetic relationship god does not make mistakes he places you around he places around your world all you will need write it down when it concerns prophetic relationship god does not make mistake he will always place around your world everything you will need i have said this many times you don't need your blessings from abroad you need it from above there are people can i shock you you want to hear this how many of you know that there is a jegunle in america are you aware no there is a there are ghettos in america and the people they are living worse than people you see in Oboko. no it's true this is not joke so the blessing is not in america if you finally escape to america thinking is your help you'll come back as yeah man yeah man you just be speaking slang that doesn't work if you are not helped of the lord running away from nigeria can't help i said this before if you're a lizard in africa you also be a lizard in america the best you can be is a gamma lizard you can't be a crocodile because you're a lizard because the lizard in you is the problem when it concerns prophetic relationship i want to pick what i'm going to read right now read what i'm going to read verse 3 and he put them in the world in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison the place where joseph was bound how come there were many other prisons in Israel, in, e in Egypt? Are you hearing me now? Joseph by destiny was supposed to be the prime minister of that nation. But the Bible said when the butler had problem with the king, the king took the butler and the baker with anger and took them to the place, not in the palace, where Joseph was bound very important so even in the midst of bondage destiny was still playing out inside prison the guy was bound real bondage not joke but god still found a way to locate him inside bondage god does not make mistake and let me say something that will help you i've said this before i've said this before everything you will need is around you you don't even need prayer points because of how precious your destiny is to God God has organized everything that will help you around your world you only need to discern them or manage them are you hearing me now every help the next person that will take you to your next level is around you but you're not seeing them so it is either discernment problem or management problem 
check out for those two things Joseph was inside prison yet a butler that will help him God organized the situation to bring him in there some people planned to study in Unicar in Uniben, in Unilag but situation finally brought you to Nsube never look down at that corner the help you needed is there that is how the wisdom of God functions the guy is a perfect plumber no how could you tell a guy whose life started from a dream he said I saw the 11 sheaves of the earth bow before me and the dreams were real and he told the father the father rebuked him if you say that again what kind of dream dream at you oh dreamer so you mean that I and your mother and your brothers will bow before you say it is not my fault I didn't make it up I dreamt a dream and as the man shut him down he said okay I understand the problem it's like because I dreamt earthly dream you don't like me the next night I said he dreamt another dream yet another dream not just another dream he dreamt yet another dream and this time it was worse I saw the 11 stars bow before me the first one was the sheaves of the earth now it's the stars of the heaven so if you doubt the earthly dream don't doubt the heavenly or God make your dream wider and stronger it's not your fault you were born that way before you came a question was asked about you you didn't just like it started liking the keyboard for nothing it is destiny calling to destiny it's called deep call it unto deep so when people are intimidated tell them hold on i didn't form it so how could you explain that almighty dreamer moving from a dreamer first to hatred his brother sold him placed him in the pit pit i've told you many i've said that many times pit is p-i-t it is not the end if you want to help a man put him in the pit do you know why the last place you can place a man is the point of pit from the pit you can rise there is no place worse than pit no place that's why before if they want to conclude a man's story they dig the earth and throw you inside it they call it burial but if they throw you down jesus said except the come of you fall and die it abides alone but if he dies another life takes up so when they threw the guy in the pit and abandoned him they didn't know he was a prophet in training so god used the pit to train the prophet in him to train the priest the powerful man in him and from the pit they moved him to potiphar from potiphar to prison can you imagine that if you are a, a, an, a, a an analyst economical analyst and you draw the graph you can say this is a downward slope but god had a program let me say this to you no matter what life turns you out whatever no matter what life brings out of you don't lose sight of the dream god gave to you keep the dream intact it's more important than every other thing around you are you hearing me now you have lost everything hold on to the dream you had in the beginning and they placed the guy in the prison i bet you when they threw him in the pit he was like confessing when they sold him to egypt it was like things are going to be good by the time they sold him to the hand of potiphar i said hey i told them now i'm eating good food i'm in charge of all the potiphar's house and it was still a problem but it was a better problem because it was eating security was there at least food security shelter security the bible said that everything that the man had he left in his hand is that okay but by the time they picked him again to the prison what i could hear from from joseph's ear is again i thought this is over i thought i've had enough of this 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 shit in my life now now the prison hold on this is a slave nobody will come for him you know there is a point they place in prison here somebody will come for you lawyers friends somebody knows you okay imagine that you go to sierra Leone. you're trying to smuggle yourself to asia around libya and they catch you and put you into prison you know what you do say your last prayer lord is over between i and you my mother goodbye father goodbye let me go and die you know who, who will come for you who that was the story of this guy but i say when it concerns your destiny god has placed around you all it takes to help you in the prison god sent the butlers 
let me even shock you at the wisdom of God I'm sure it was God that provoked Pharaoh against his butler and the beggar I knew the way I have studied God it was God that would have provoked that guy to act contrary so that he will enter the prison to help his servant why so downcast oh my soul put your hope in God put your hope in God oh put your hope in God oh why so downcast oh my soul put your hope in God and pray the Lord oh my soul why are you downcast why are you giving up when God has not given up on you it's over in your mind but you read in God's book God said you are a program you are a work in progress can I shock you flour can never become bread until it goes to oven the oven is fire fire is either a destroyer or a purifier fire is purifying you don't get tired as long as God and hope is inside you forget it it can't get worse you do find the first lesson the second lesson don't miss them hallelujah come on here hallelujah hmm. glory to God the next thing we are going to see is that this dreamer who God located in the prison met people now watch this verse 1 it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord the king of Egypt and Pharaoh was wrought against these two officers and against the chief butlers and against the baker and he put them in the ward of the house of the captain of the guard into the prison 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 number two God said to me in building prophetic relationship remember I told you something the first thing is building prophetic I thought about building prophetic relationship and I also taught you discerning the key word is that everybody is not prophetic relationship to you I'm going to talk about that in a moment can I shock you can I shock you if God wants to help you he will separate you from men sometimes relationship can be a distraction for God to help Abraham he separated him from people I'm going to show you the people you must separate from after service yes Elisha gave his servant a command go and lay on the child take my staff he said when you go greet no man salute no man Jesus sent the disciples on an assignment he said when you go salute no man do you know why men are capable of becoming strategic distraction yes come out from your father's house to the place I will show you that means that sometimes your father's house relationship familiarity can become a trap to the future you must have tap your friend say come out come out come out so sometimes there are relationships you don't need and that's why I thought about discerning 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 Laban said to Jacob that I have learned by experience by discernment that the Lord blessed me because of you is that okay so the key word is that there are many people around you and they are not all prophetic relationship they are just normal people they are conventional people how do I know the right person well look at this now you need discernment but can I shock you can I shock you come this guy is them broke them broke nothing will come out of this guy's life based on my human analysis do you know the thought of the Lord why are you concluding on somebody let me tell you this listen put the camera on my face listen if you are here and you have ever despised a young person you despise God do you know what it means to be young the word youth means possibilities you are doubting the possibleness president if the cop turn he said i will overturn and overturn it again don't look at yourself like some of you are going to become the governors of your state in the years to come so i i just met this guy but something in me he remember he's broke and my discernment my analysis human analysis i want to figure out one out of this guy is that okay but something in me keep pulling me toward this guy there is something convincing me stick to this guy 
Are you hearing me now? If something is pulling you to a person that is broke that may not be able to contribute to your life, look deeper. It gives me the second point of what I want to show you. Write it down. Hold on, sir. Number two, God said to me, when you meet the people God sent to you, at any level you meet them, never despise them. At any level you meet prophetic relationship, never despise them. Because sometimes, watch this, sometimes they appear needful. Sometimes they appear the way you don't expect them to look like. Take for instance, the brain engine of your company may not be looking it. Let me give you an instance. In Microsoft Word office, that's the office of uh, Bill Gates. You know, everybody's paid to work. Everybody's paid to do something. Office is filled with workers. People are writing. People are working. And then a particular um, supervisor, a job supervisor, watch this, was employed to make sure that people are working and then if we are paying you $100, you are working out $150. You are working out that money. So we don't pay you for nothing. Together. So here come this man, enter this office, people are working. Enter this office, people are working. Enter this office, people are working. And then he comes to an office, a young man's leg is on the top of his desk, he's thinking. And maybe he has a bad day. He's having a bad day. So he left him. Next time he comes to check, everybody is working. This guy is thinking and he got angry with him and went to the owner of the company. Why will this guy always be thinking and he's not working? We need to sack him. You say who? Say that person. We paid him to think. What he's doing is the real business. It's the real business. Business at the speed of thought. The real person is the one thinking. Somebody may be the thought engine of your program, but he's poor. And you want to undo him because he doesn't have money? You are not smart. You don't buy ideas. There are people who are concept driven. So the Lord said to me, anywhere you meet your helpers, do not despise them. Especially when you are sure they are prophetic help. Am I talking to you? Don't look at their clothes. Joseph was an interpreter of dream. Joseph was the one that would bring these guys out, but they was inside the prison with the butlers. And I shock you. When Moses, Joseph, saw these guys, the guys were in prison, but he didn't despise them. Sit down. Number three. Why are you despising people? You think your husband will come the way you want him to look like? He won't come that way. But if you are prophetic and you have discernment, you will see a billionaire in that man. You will see that creation has been placed under, on, 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 under bondage, not willingly. And something is telling you, stick with this guy. I've seen ladies that made some useless choice. Two, three guys were coming in their life. They choose the one that is flashy. And the other one that is broke. Come on, what, what do you mean? 15 years later, the table has turned. Somebody is driving G-Wagon now, but that's the last G-Wagon he will drive in his life. That's the last G-Wagon. Another person is still jumping by, but he will own estates. How will you know the person? If you have the culture of despising people or judging people by the look of your eyes, you will miss your future. Am I talking to you here? Stop looking at people's size. Look at content. Let me tell you this. If you sit down with a man of vision in three minutes, you will know. It's called mental constipation that causes verbal diarrhea. The guy has constipation. The thing is full. Anytime you meet him, he's telling your dream. His dream. In the next five years, in the next three years. It's not him. He's not forming it. Verbal diarrhea. So the first thing you will ask for in a man, it is not his asset, but his mental asset. Where are you going to? And then after he has finished talking, check his steps. Check his steps. Because some people right now have been on the other Yes. My father told me that a rich man, every young man, we first of all put you in the first before you begin to grow. 
Us in, in Igbo language, interpret it for yourself. Do you know what it means? It took me almost 10 years to cover the grounds behind me. I'm telling you, for 10 years I was in a back leg. It was like I was, I was at a spot. Only me knew I was making progress. 100,000 will come, we will use it to buy microphone. 1 million will come, we will use it to buy drum. This one will come, we kept buying and buying and buying and buying and buying. We didn't change clothes until the whole ground was fully covered every other step bam the world is seen let me tell you this as well as this yahoo yahoo generation somebody hit money bam he goes to buy bands stupidity of the highest order some people are living in their car they don't have a house you are using a, a iphone 13 it's, 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 it doesn't make sense. There are people that are freaks of device. Just earpod, five hundred dollars. And yet the person's mother now phone call. What is wrong with you? Let me ask you. Has earphone, the earpiece finished in the market? Some is even one fifty. Pa, put it on the ear. Will it stop who you are becoming? How does phone define who you are? Nokia Touch can still make call. I can't see myself taking 500 pounds to go to the market to buy a phone. For what? There are many other things to use my money to do. Don't be confused with that device. That's why I taught you in this church, living a life of competition will shorten your life. You are not in competition with men. You are in competition with your destiny. Somebody's phone is now what is making you to have sleepless night. Phone. Let me shock you. What techno can do, infinite can do better. And what infinite can do, the other one can do. So what is the matter? If you don't have money for Samsung, don't kill yourself. And what I tell, when I can tell. Can I can I talk to you? These things are real. They are real. I'm telling you the truth. Put it in your spirit. Put it in your spirit. Stop competing. So that you can be able to have the space to drive. It's for another day, it's not for today. I'll tell you this later. Somebody came to my house, I told him how I avoided all these fake prophets. What made me not to join the fake gang? Because there are some fake gangs in the kingdom. They are priests though, but they are arranging men of God. They are the more you look, the less you see. I would have entered that gang. Do you know why? The problem is highway. Almost highway. Fian, fian, fian. People overtaking you. You now turn your car. Yeah, is he overtaken? Okay, we will overtake. We will overtake. I told them, listen, look for your lane and stay in your lane. Can I shock you? That person who is running far. Have you noticed that anytime police stop people, there is a little stopover. You still see him behind you. All those overtaking and speed, all of them tend to stupidity. One tiny, one tiny, what you pothole, bam, he's off, he dies. So why are you running? High years, 15 minutes difference. Take it easy, my friend. Am I talking to you? So you stop despising men. We are still coming. Our kind is coming. Let me shock you. You have seen the best of Pastor Chris. You have not seen my best yet. You have not seen my best. So if you see me now and despise me, it's over for you. Number three, number three. When you meet this strategic relationship, listen to me. Listen, listen. I'm still particular about the relationship the Holy Ghost dragged you to. Your spirit, your deep dragged you to. Whether he's poor, he's broke, or rich. Because they may not be all rich people. They may not be. The Bible said that there was a city that a poor woman saved the city. A city, a whole city. A poor woman saved the city yet she was not known a maid in the house of 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 what's his name again Naaman was the one that saved him from poverty so strategic relations are not only rich people sometimes they are also broke people but if they are really strategic if God planted them when you meet them never be need conscious be seed conscious right that's the third thing yes when you meet strategic relationship never be need conscious don't overbug them with your need they are not your god 
I said they are not your God. They are only men who had God on your behalf. Let me shock you. The day you start making them your God, God will make them to disappoint you. You know why? He said, are Egypts. He said, are Egyptians, not men. He said, are their horses, not flesh. The day you turn on men as your help, God will make them to disappoint you so that he can become God alone. So when you walk into a man who is your prophetic relationship, please be need free and be seed conscious. What does that mean? Come in to solve his problem first. Remember that Joseph did not despise the butler and the baker, though they were in prison. The next thing was that Joseph was the first person who now invested into them. That's what I call harnessing prophetic relationship. Do them good. They will help you for life. There is a friend of my mom, actually a friend of the family. We have become bonded friends. We lived in 36A Isiokwe Road several years ago. 1992, 93, 94. And coincidentally, that building is called Deeper Life Building. Because almost every member were Deeper Life members. Do you know what happened there? Because of the way we loved ourselves and lived together, we all were looking like brothers. I can't forget brother um, Nande. Bro, God in Zello. Bro, it was a family. The love that we shared in that building became so bonding that they were more important to our physical brothers. We loved ourselves. That bond still exists till today. Brother Nand is the owner of Superb Electronics. The wife is terribly in love with my mom. Sometimes my mom will fly to Lagos and stay with her for some days. By then, it's oh. And at the end of the day, money is going. The relationship has become perpetually useful. At a time, my father's brother's children, that's my cousins, they were stranded and my father was to help train them. My father called his friend and said, listen, if there's one thing you will do for me, I want to give you these children too, for you, establish them for me. The man said, with all pressure, brother mode, as long as it is you. That's how the daughter was trained in Lagos. And the guy that married this girl, very rich guy, was also a servant of the man. He also took another of, his, of his, this young guy, sent him to Lagos. The man took and adopted them. That's what relationship can do. Powerful. The home is like our, I mean, we don't even know where we are coming from. It's like one family. Strategic, prophetic relationship. But look at this. Don't start with need. Start with seed. What is seed? Impact. Impact. Look for what you are bringing into every relationship. Be the one that is sowing the seed so that you can be the one having the harvest. Don't be the taker, taker, taker. I know you are broke and you now met a man that should help you. You now calculated all your bills of problem. Bill of laden. Bill of challenge. Bill of confusion. Bill of poverty. You landed it in one man's head. And the test message you sent him was 10 page test message, SMS. In the midnight. From that day, you now wonder, you call him, he does he busy your call. Why won't he busy your call? That somebody shows interest to you does not mean that he's supposed to house your trouble. He has his own family problem. Are you hearing me now? That we are addressing where does not mean we don't have, we have a no problem. They know what to do in your life, but don't be the one telling it. Don't be so consumed with need that you scare your helpers. I don't know who I'm talking to. And I don't know the sense he's making. My father usually will tell us those days. When you go to your uncle, because my uncle is very rich, very rich man. And I mean rich, is rich. My father told us those days when we were kids, when you go to your uncle's house, don't come and sit like every other person. Wash his car. Be the one cleaning the house. Let him see that you are coming to serve. Not uncle. 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 Now uncle has banned gate man. If you see him, don't open the gate. He doesn't hate you. But you have troubled his soul. Look at the fine guy God gave to you. The first day of outing. iPhone 6. First day. First day. 
is it not village spirit hold on is it not is it not is it not ikenga that that, that that destroyed you first day let me take her out in fact the day the guy saw you your phone broke the screens are hanging then the guy now because he is in need of this communication by all means now took you to a phone shop rather than saying just get me take no it's okay i don't i don't I, i'm not a phone person the demon in you now came out then all your evil cat work is now coming out uh -huh. this i should pick hmm. okay i've never seen any kind man like you the guy is struggling with his business but just want to claim he's a man mm. please that girl has a 5g phone or whatever how much did they settle the guy with just five hundred thousand. the phone you want to settle yourself with at the first time one million he will buy it oh but it's over <laughs> no i'm being real to you now the moment you are in relationship you remember all your brothers that have not gone to school and i cry <laughs> in the midnight <laughs> i have this burden now you he solved the first one you remember okay that is in lego the problem that were not visible to you when he was not there the problem was living a rent-free life in your life now it becomes obvious if you don't pay the rent you will die what is wrong listen can i afford to say this when we were young i was a young preacher we traveled for a program in abuja 2003 i had a crusade in charlatan hotel and uh, a rich man hosted us the owner of lento aluminium okay in the conference the person who took us was a bishop i don't want to call his name because he's here and the man placed us in the hotel we were many you know what he said he said eat anything you want i will pay anything you think you want to eat just eat so in the morning hello do you have chicken put chops <laughs> um add fried meat there <laughs> because the instruction is anything you want to eat eat we are chopping and dragging bishop as a god does he said listen in a liqua remember that honorarium is inside it no it's true the person sent to there to know whether you are a carnivorous man the line of the tribe of Ichida. because anytime you see meat the spirit in you comes out i've not eaten turkey for 15 years now a rich man will place there to know this the kind of person by the time he's now coming to pay me they say 1.2 million he will smile he will say man of god god bless you please take this fifty thousand. we'll see you next that's the end I said that learning wisdom as a child he said when you are eating the second spec bible say put knife on your throat when you come before the house of a king he will use food to know of what sort you are in discipline the lord has settled you with one man so your settlement is now one man so when you meet them don't be seen need conscious be seed conscious if you are the one that planted impact go your way that brings me to the fourth thing i will show you and then we die you ready for this <laughs> i'm not too sure you are you ready for this okay before i will show you the fourth one let me read a silent scripture for you as at the time joseph has planted the seeds and has sown his relevancy he was the one that planted seed impacted them interpreted their dreams encouraged don't worry he now brought his empathy into the line of the hell what is the line 12 okay verse 14 said but think on me when he shall be well with you and show me kindness i pray thee haven't you maybe who told that no and now the person how did you get an amma now or forget one 
don't get angry with them if God did not send them to your life they can't help you yes don't bother don't kill yourself there are things God can see in the person and change his mind do you remember when Abimelech told Abraham to come and take his wealth he said no lest you say you made Abraham rich Abraham is of God he is well to be the testimony of God every man that will help you will be by the command of God not for benevolence so when God sees a man that wants to take his praise he will make him to be scared out of your presence so think of me when you, you get there and make mention of me unto Pharaoh please help me Potiphar has placed me here and Potiphar is a high officer in this land nobody can save me from him he said and bring me out of this place he didn't even bring me to the throne I'm going in the throne amen I'm tired of being in the prison bring me out of this place think of me look at verse 15 look at verse 15 he said, for indeed I was a stool, I was stolen away out of the land of the evil. And here also have I done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon. The guy is already crying. Hey, what is wrong? 15, 15, 16. He said, when the chief butler saw the tablet. Okay, now let me show you the last scripture in that 21. Is that? Thank you, Lord. Okay, 23, rather. 23 said, yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph but forgot him? Hi. How come? There are some of you that are bothered and shocked at your brother. It didn't shock him. How can this guy have this money and I'm suffering? Do you know when John was captured, he sent a message. He said, please go and ask him, is he the one Oh, should I look for another? Wait, 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 wait. Is this real? Is it fact? But oh, don't worry. Something shocked me. God told Elijah, go down to Zarephath. I have commanded a widow dear to sustain you. Hold on. Hold on. I have commanded a widow dear to sustain you. What's the meaning of that word? That means the widow has heard and the widow is waiting for you. Two of us, Two of us. When Elijah came, the widow was speaking wood. He didn't even greet her. Elijah was the one that greeted. The widow would have said, ah, Mom of God, were you the one I dreamt about? Let me go and get the food. The woman didn't talk. The man of God greeted her. He greeted her. He said, please get me water. It was Elijah that made the demand. Yet God said, I have commanded the, the widow. It's a mystery. How come this guy interpreted this dream and explain his plight to this man and he forgot him. This is what God said to me. Number four. The Lord said, when you plant your seed in any prophetic relationship, never bother about God's side of the story. Don't bother. Do your job and go and sleep. One day, David woke up and said, Is there anybody remaining in the house of Saul? I want to show him kindness. He now added a clause for Jonathan's sake. Jonathan planted a seed in David. He didn't reap and died. But one day, Mephibosheth had to reap of that seed. Just do the planting and walk away. I don't think there is any man in my lifetime that was as kind as my father. There is no man I know alive as kind as my father. All his kindness was not visited. Seed time and harvest are different. The Holy Ghost said, when you do the job, don't press the guy to pay you back. Do your job and walk away. The mathematics is in the hand of God. In Genesis chapter 41. The dreamer has forgotten his dream. Has forgotten the great dilemma. That is the character of a man. Can I shock you? Man's memory is too short. They forget a lot. Very short memory. So you think man will help you. You will frustrate yourself. God is the help. That's why your place of prayer is important. Oh God, let my helpers be awake to see. Awaken their consciousness. It is not by shouting, that man is useless, he's wicked. No, 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 no. If the Lord has not stayed, him, he cannot help you. But look at the technology of God. Chapter 41. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamt 
two full years went the guy forgot and Pharaoh dreamt God will organize the situation for you why so that the excellency of praise might be of him if you are a tree God is watering forget stop trying to cut corners to get things done stay on your lane and do your part two full years Bible use the word fool and when God has waited for this guy he couldn't God brought a dream to Pharaoh can I shock you do you know how the dream came the guy finished having dream he threatened the magicians if you don't tell me the interpretation I can we kill all of you in fact where the butler you know I've sent you to prison before I will kill you again I killed the butler I killed the baker you know that I'm not joking the kind of dream I had two times now if I don't get the interpretation at that point the Bible said the guy remembered do you know how he said he said oh I have sinned let's let's see whether we can trace it glory to God I'm confident of this very thing I'm confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in me come on he shall bear for me until the day of Jesus Christ he shall bear for me until the day of Jesus Christ now look at verse 8 and it came to pass in the morning that the spirit was troubled and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof and Pharaoh told them his dream but there was none that could interpret them and Pharaoh then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh saying I do remember my fault this day who planted the dream? God. Who was the one to remember? The one that he planted seed. Some of you, your helpers are in London. They will remember you. Just keep praying and asking God to do the job. One day in the dream, restlessness. Bible said in that day could not the king sleep. Who planted the seed? Mordecai. What was the seed? He revealed the secret of the men that wanted to kill the king. The king did not promote him as a chief security. He only put a big touch. He said, you used to see well. Look at this touch. Please, they're pointing it well. Who touch be promotion? But God knows what he's doing. Sometimes what you do are not recorded. They are not rewarded. They're only recorded. You didn't hear what I said? Write this down. Anytime you do a great work, pray for recommendation, not commendation. Each time a great work is done, it is either commendation or recommendation. He's a great mechanic. And he does my work. Okay, thank you so much. 3,000. I was supposed to give him one time. I gave him 3,000. Wonderful. I only commended you. But there's another one that, nah, please, I don't have money. Hey, please, manage this one five. As I'm driving, I think, nah, there's one mechanic I know. You see what I'm doing now? I'm extending your network. When you do great work, pray for recommendation, not commendation. Sometimes they are recorded, not re rewarded. But don't bother. The day your file will be open. Are you hearing me now? It takes the character of a seed. When you plant a seed on the earth, they don't grow immediately. They take time keep helping keep doing good one of these days your seed will become your help don't forget it don't forget it don't change your goodness because people are becoming bad stay on your path you are different you are the interpreter you are the prime minister you only a prophet in training this season is seasoning you for a greater harvest hallelujah so the Holy Ghost said to me, I should tell the church, when you do your part, leave the side of God. He knows how to network it. So that I don't frustrate yourself. Glory to God.